Lynn Hiles Ministries presents Dr. Lynn Hiles, That You Might Have Life. And here's your host, Dr. Lynn Hiles. Thank you for joining in again today on the program, and uh, we just are uh, just excited to be with you again. Um, uh, the first thing I want to share with you this morning is that uh, there's, there's some, some real important changes that are coming up for our ministry that I want you to pay close attention to. Uh, you may or may not know, but today will be the last airing for us on the Church Channel. We want to say first of all to the Church Channel, the TBN family, how deeply, deeply grateful we are that they have allowed us to be on their network for the amount of time that we have been. Uh, but today will be the last program on this channel for uh, this particular program. Uh, so uh, once again, we want to say th thank you to you for your faithfulness and uh, your response in, in watching us on a regular basis. Now, here's some good news about it is that we are not going off the air. We are going to be on uh, several different other networks, and hopefully you'll be able to find us there. Let me suggest, first of all, that... Uh, uh, to, to stay updated with everything that's happening with us because there's a lot of changes that are happening very rapidly that you simply go to our website at lenhouse.com and if you need to you can just remember it's right there on the screen uh, but uh, that will give you updates of where we're going to be uh, because as of today we are tentatively or it looks like we we have not yet uh, finalized the uh, every detail of it but at least tentatively we are going to go on first of all the impact network and uh, that will be at 4 p.m. on Mondays. At, uh, that's Eastern Standard Time on the Impact Network. Now, Impact Network is on Direct TV, uh, channel 380. Uh, it is on Dish Network, channel 268. So if you're watching us via Direct or Dish, you're still going to be able to get our program on those channels. We are also, uh, at this point, and these are expanding rapidly, but we will be on cable uh, Comcast Cable in Arkansas on channel 598. We will be on cable in Indiana on Comcast on channel 273. We will be on in Kentucky on Comcast and channel 242. And in Michigan, we will be on uh, channel 400 cable again. And we will also be on in the Bahamas. So if you're watching us uh, uh, you can, and you have friends in the Bahamas, you, you can uh, tell them that we're going to be on there. Uh, the, uh, we will, the launch date for that is June the 13th of uh, this year, of course, 2016. Uh, the second network that we will be going on, uh, and we will be going on this network uh, the 16th of June. Uh, again, that's, that's very soon, very rapidly, but we will be on the Uplift TV network. And for those of you who can get Uplift, it's on Direct TV, channel 379. It's also on Frontier Communications cable, but you're going to have to check your local listings for the listings there. And the airtime for that at this point is Thursdays at 12 p.m. So those of you who are watching us in this time slot can still, if you have uh, Direct TV, can watch us there. And that is going to expand also into uh, some probably other cable markets. So we will come on at 12 o'clock on Thursday. And then we are set to launch uh, with uh, GEB America. We will begin with them at 6, uh, let's see, that will be 7, uh, let's see, uh, yeah, that will be uh, 7 p.m. We will come on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time Zone on uh, GEB America. And again, that will be July the 27th. At this point, we will be uh, broadcasting from there beginning in July. So you can get them on GEBamerica.com. You can get them on Direct TV channel 363. Uh, you can get it on uh, 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 KGEB TV 53 in Tulsa. You can get it on KUGB TV 28.1 Houston, Texas. To all of our friends in Trinidad, Tobago, the good news is we're going to be on there as well on GEB. So for our friends in Trinidad, Tobago, uh, we're, we're glad to have a channel where you could tune in and watch us there. There's also a phone app for iOS and, Andrew, and Android for this ch channel and uh, li Lifestream.tv. Uh, you can also go and get this on Roku. Several of these are on Roku. I actually have downloaded uh, on my own television set. If you have a Roku 
and you can get them at Sam's Club or you can get them at, at Costco or at a lot of different places, but uh, you can get us uh, by downloading the Impact Channel and you can get it by downloading, I believe it is, uh, 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 I think it is uh, um, a Golden Eagle, I believe it is. One, uh, it, I believe it's Golden Eagle, yeah, GEB America that you can get on Roku. And you just simply go to their channel store and download that channel. Uh, for those of you who may say, well, that's not on anything that we've got, uh, you can go, we have a channel that you can go to on YouTube. YouTube, uh, you know, can get from any computer, any smart television, any smart device, and you can watch it on demand because every program that we have aired to date is on those uh, particular channels. And also, we will continue to do our same podcast. You can go to iTunes. And there's also an RSS feed for your Android device. Uh, but you can go there and you can download, uh, you know, the, the podcast and listen to the broadcast uh, through iTunes, or you can watch on demand uh, at, uh, at YouTube. And you simply go there and uh, either Google my name, Lynn Hiles, or uh, that you might have life. And uh, all of the stuff that we have aired together, subscribe to our channel there, and uh, they will let you know when we have aired something brand new. So we are very excited about that and the possibilities that can come from uh, uh, expanding our, our base. Uh, let me say as well, since I'm telling you this, that uh, you know your support to this ministry is, is absolutely vital to the survival of the ministry as we continue to reach the nations of the earth with the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of His grace. We have all kinds of opportunities that are coming up for us from this year has been an international year of travel. We've got more opportunities than we can fulfill internationally. Uh, we, we, we just got back from Lima, Peru. We're a phenomenal uh, uh, time there. It was just awesome. We are at this time got plans to be in Brazil in August and uh, uh, I can't tell you how deeply grateful we are uh, for those of you who have responded and those of you who have supported our ministry. If you have not and you feel the prompting of the Holy Spirit, uh, we just encourage you to, if you've been sitting on the sidelines saying, I feel like I need to get behind this ministry, please do that. Uh, as you know, our ministry, we have no gimmicks. We, we don't have any uh, pressure tactics. We don't use any kind of, uh, um, you know, forms of... Uh, you know, trying to manipulate you to get you to give. We believe the Holy Spirit can speak to your hearts and, uh, you know, God will enable uh, all grace to flow through you. We believe that if you give uh, sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly, of course, but uh, we're just thankful for those of you who've been a part of this ministry. And once again, we want to say thank you uh, uh, to uh, the church channel, to the TBN uh, family of channels. Uh, they have decided to go, I think, in some different directions, but that news will need to come from them. But we're just thankful to them for giving us the platform to literally uh, share the gospel that we've shared. And the uh, series that we did on Revelation was done over almost probably, uh, probably pretty close to two years, maybe a little over the time that we have been on the church channel. And by the way, let me say, if you ha uh, have not uh, ordered that series, that series uh, will soon, if it's not available already, you can order the series on CD that we taught from the book of Revelation. It is the audio portion of the television program, and you can order that by calling the number on the screen, and this will be the last time you have the opportunity, on this channel at least, to be able to order uh, those products. So I encourage you to get it. It's probably the most uh, uh, complete piece of work I've ever done on the book of Revelation, and uh, we just did a leadership conference uh, for just leaders only. Recently had probably had over 200 leaders that came as we taught some of these things, and the response was overwhelmingly positive and phenomenal. And so uh, we just, uh, again, want to say thank you for your viewing, but uh, again, go to my website. There'll be constant information about our changes, and uh, as we begin to transition and change, there could be glitches, there could be things that change it, but uh, we are definitely staying on the air. And if you'll stay in touch with us, we deeply appreciate it. You know, in this last segment, especially, and it's kind of a bittersweet because we've surely loved sharing with you the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of His grace, but I just want to kind of summarize some of the things that we've shared over the last couple of years on the book of Revelation. And uh, just to kind of review, and then uh, again, this will be the last program that airs on this channel. Uh, 
But the book of Revelation is primarily not about future world events. It was a revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave. I'm convinced that a revelation of Jesus to you will produce a revelation of Jesus through you. When I think about the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ to me, I'm not looking for some future appearing, but just like the book of Revelation is talking about uh, the word appearing, there is the Greek word apocalypse or uh, if you will, the word itself means to unveil. We've allowed Hollywood to kind of interpret for us what we think apocalypse means. We think it means bombs bursting in air, and, and certainly there were some catastrophes that we've already shared with you in the book of Revelation that occurred during the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70, and a lot of the stuff that, you know, if you take a trip even to Israel, they'll show you the ruins and some of the stuff that actually absolutely have been documented historically that had happened and occurred there. But the word apocalypse to me it means to unveil or to uncover. Uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the Gospels are about the earth walk of Jesus, His earth ministry, His earth expression, His death, His burial, and His resurrection. But the book of Revelation is about the ascended Christ. It's about the presently reigning Jesus. It's about God becoming King through the person and work of Jesus Christ, through His death, His burial, and His resurrection. When you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John through the lens of a Jewish mindset, there was an expectancy in their hearts that the kingdom of God was at hand and that it would immediately appear. And they uh, would even were saying to Jesus because they thought the kingdom would immediately appear. And the other day as I was thinking about that, I was thinking how so many times we think in terms of our Western mindset about what we think about the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. And we think about it being a planet three miles south of Mars and and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that there's not a heaven, that if you, you know, that our loved ones who uh, have died and gone on before are no doubt in heaven. I'm not taking anything from that. But the expectancy in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John was of the coming kingdom of Messiah. And where did they get the inclination that the kingdom of God would immediately appear? It was through the whole reading of the Old Covenant that they read, that they got that idea. In other words, they didn't have the, the New Testament that we now have. They, they, they understood that because they had read things like Psalm 2. They had read things like Isaiah chapter 9, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. His name shall be called the Wonderful, the Counselor, the Mighty God, a Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. And the government shall be upon His shoulders, and of the increase of His government and peace there will be no end. And uh, they, they read Daniel chapter 7, and they read the book of Daniel. They knew it verbatim, and they knew that during these kings that Daniel chapter 2 talks about, these Roman kings, they knew the timing because of the prophetic word of, uh, of the Lord through Daniel and through Isaiah, who said that, uh, you know, they gave time slots of, uh, 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 of 70 times seven, 70 weeks of years of 490 years, and they knew that the commandment had gone forth in Ezra chapter 7 to restore and to build Jerusalem, and they knew that there would be a certain amount of time from there until Messiah the Prince would come on the scene. So there was an expectancy in their heart of a coming kingdom, and in the mind of the Jewish believer, they saw things in terms of two separate ages, an old covenant age and a coming age. And what Jesus was offering them is He was offering them, those of you who follow me in the regeneration, uh, the Amplified Bible says, in the messianic rebirth of the world, that there was a, 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 an age that was dawning of a messianic kingdom, and there was a kingdom that was coming. And so they missed the coming of the king and the coming of the kingdom uh, in His earth walk because He didn't meet their criteria for how they believed He should show up. And I'm afraid that we've missed a whole lot of stuff because we don't really realize uh, that we are looking perhaps in the tangible, literal ways of seeing things for uh, this coming kingdom when in reality this kingdom, Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. That doesn't mean it's not for this world. He's just talking about its origin is from above, it's not from beneath, and it is a uh, spiritual kingdom, and he was demanded by the scribes and Pharisees. And Luke, I believe it is 17, 18, somewhere in that range, he says they were demanded by the scribes and Pharisees, when will the kingdom come? 
at least the Pharisees had the right question. They were asking him, when will the kingdom come? And he wasn't asking them, Lord, when are we going to go to the kingdom? He was asking them, when is this kingdom coming? And Jesus' response to them is, the kingdom does not come with observation. Now, the first level of that is it does not come with outward show or open display. In other words, it's not tangible, like I'm not going to lead an insurrection and bring an army that will overthrow the Romans. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. But Jesus didn't come to introduce a a kingdom that was full of fighting. It was a kingdom that was full of peace, that would flow not from tangible armies and bullets, but a sword that came out of his mouth of the word of God, and that the real battle was for the hearts and minds. And uh, so, you know, uh, when, when he said it does not come with observation, outward show, open display, he's really trying to get us to shift how we perceive the Scriptures to be. Because everything was moving from a natural, physical, tangible into a spiritual, uh, symbolic, if you would, uh, type of interpretation. And some of the other things that hit me recently in uh, one of my meetings was I was looking at uh, Hebrews, the 12th chapter, where he says, for you did not come to the mount that might be touched. You didn't come to blackness and darkness, and you didn't come to fear and trembling, and you didn't come to uh, the voice that said, if you touch the edge of this mountain, you'll be thrust through with the dark. For so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But you are come to Mount Zion, and you have already come to the city of the living God, Hebrews 12. Now what he's saying there, there's a lot of things that can be said, but the, the mount that if you touched the edge of it, you'd be thrust through with the dark, was Mount Sinai. That's the old covenant law, that's where the law was given. And Hebrews is saying, you did not come to this mountain. But he shifts gears and says, but you are come to Mount Zion, because the contrast here is Mount Sinai, old covenant. Mount Zion, new covenant. And you see, even in Revelation, the 14th chapter, those that are with the Lamb are following the Lamb where He goes, but the Lamb is on Mount Zion. It's a people who have followed Him out of an old covenant paradigm into a new covenant paradigm. But watch, this is what I'm after, because this is, I've preached it a bunches, bunches of times, but what really caught my attention is He was saying to them in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, you've not come to the mount that can be touched. And all of a sudden, I started thinking about these Hebrews in their transition from uh, old covenant. Everything has shifted. They no longer have to bring a woolly lamb Uh, to be sacrificed for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus was the true Lamb of God. They no longer have to go to physical circumcision because now baptism was for the circumcision of their hearts. They no longer have to go to a physical tabernacle or temple to worship God. Now Jesus Himself is the temple and you also are the temple of the Holy Ghost. And so now everything shifts to a, uh, a physical tangibleness to something that you can't seemingly touch. In other words, they were still looking for, and these Hebrews, in the pressure that they're under, in the book of Hebrews, they're being persecuted, they're being sawn asunder, they're losing loved ones under the persecution of Nero and and these Roman governors as great persecution fell upon the church. They're suffering the spoiling of their goods. And they are probably, like many of us, have been so traditionally used to the tangibleness of the smell of the incense burning the bleeding of dying lambs as they are being sacrificed, the physical uh, touch of a physical tabernacle, the pomp and ceremony of a Levitical priesthood. But now we've come to a spiritual house, and it's not something you could touch anymore. Now we've come to, instead of a Levitical priesthood, a priesthood after the order of Melchizedek, where Jesus has become the priest of a better covenant, and if there's a change of priesthood, there is of necessity must be a change of the covenant, of the law. Because with every uh, change, there had to be a change. That's what Hebrews says. So everything has shifted from a physical, tangible tabernacle. Uh, it has shifted from a Levitical priesthood. It has shifted from the promised land being a piece of real estate to Hebrews, the fourth chapter, where the promised land in the new covenant is rest in the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4, about 1 through 10 there. And you begin to see that everything has shifted from what you can touch, handle, taste, feel, and somehow 
we still haven't made that transition in our thinking in the new covenant because we're looking for tangible material stuff. When the kingdom was coming on the scene, a new form of government. Man, I, there's just so much to say here in just kind of conclusion of this series, but you know, the reality of it is, is that under the new covenant, see, a lot of people have jumped on the bandwagon of freedom from the law. But very few of them have made the shift to realize that not only it's what we're free from or what we've turned from, but what we've turned towards. And we are free from the law, but we've also moved into a new form of government called the kingdom of God. The Message Bible says, I believe it is in 2 Corinthians 3, it says, For if the government of condemnation was glorious, how about this government of affirmation? And so uh, one condemns you and the other affirms you. One is visible, natural, comes with observation and observances. Even when he was asked of the scribes Pharisees when the kingdom would come, he said the kingdom does not come with observation. And the first level of that is you can't see it, it's not feelable or tangible like I just said. But the second dimension of it is, is that the word observances there is also the same uh, word or root word that's used in Galatians where Paul said, I'm afraid of you because you go back up under law and you observe times and laws and feasts. So in other words, he's saying that the, the new covenant kingdom of God does not come through the observances of old covenant rituals or old covenant uh, processions or old covenant tabernacle or old covenant uh, divers washings. The kingdom of God is within you is what Jesus said. This is not a physical, it's not, it's not some uh, uh, outward thing, but it's the kingdom that now is. And so the shift has to be made in our thinking, and we, it, it, from, we got a natural tabernacle, and now it's a spiritual house. We have a, had a physical priesthood, now it's a spiritual priesthood. We had a physical piece of real estate called the promised land, but in Hebrews 4, it's a spiritual promised land called rest. In, in, in Hebrews, uh, I mean the old covenant, it was a natural Jerusalem, but in Hebrews chapter 12, he says, for you are come to Mount Zion, and you've already come to the city of the living God, because in the new covenant, the city of God is not a place, it's a people. I've already taught you that in several of the last segments concerning the city of God. It is the new tabernacle of God. One tabernacle was fading off of the scene, one temple. That was where their heaven and earth met. But the new temple and the new heaven and the new earth are found in the person, first of all, of Jesus Christ, because in the latter part of Revelation, he says this. He says, And I saw no temple there, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple thereof. If you are in Christ, you are a new heaven and a new earth. And, and, and uh, you know, uh, it is, it is, it is, the paradigm shift says, well, you, you, just a few moments ago you said, well, we're the tabernacle of God. Well, it, that's very true. Because what happens is, is that John 14 says, I and my Father, we will come, and we will take up our abode in you. And then he goes on to talk about, I am in my Father, and my Father is in me, and we're in you. So it's, we are in Christ who is the temple and the tabernacle of this city, and Christ is in us. So it is both. We become the corporate expression, the community of faith, the bride, the Lamb's wife. When John, in the conclusion of the Revelation, said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, the whole paradigm shifts because what he's simply saying to them is, Hey, God is not just living in a building in the Middle East now. What He's presently doing is He's presently reigning through the midst of His tabernacle and temple of God, which we are. And so Jesus is presently reigning. The kingdom of God is here. It's continued to expand because the kingdom of God, again, is not meat and drink. It's righteousness. It's peace. It's joy. It's located in the Holy Ghost. And so in just making some concluding remarks, the book of Revelation is about the reigning present Jesus. In chapter 1, He walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. The seven golden candlesticks are the seven churches. Put it as simple as I know how to. He's telling you that this revelation of Jesus is a revelation of Jesus, both head and body. But this Jesus is now walking in the midst of His church. Then He writes seven letters to seven churches. Those seven letters are letters to tell you what we need to repent of or change our thinking about in order to access this new covenant. The things He tells them to repent of, works, labor, labor works, and some of those things are old covenant concepts. He said, if you can repent or change your mind, then you're going to access this. And then all of a sudden in chapter 4, the throne room is open with a rainbow around it. The rainbow is a symbol of a covenant. It's the new covenant. It's the one, it's the symbol of peace. God said, I'll never be angry with you again. 
Then there's a throne, and the throne is the kingdom. The kingdom is present. The kingdom uh, is, is, is accessed the moment you repent. And then there's a little book that begins to be opened. It's a revelation of the life of the Lamb that's in there, but in, in it also comes the revelation that Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24. There are wars, rumors of wars that come with the riders on the horses. There are uh, uh, famines and earthquakes and death and hell released. And, and then there's a uh, uh, you know, then there is, there is a, uh, a fig tree that's shaken by a mighty wind and just tremendous catastrophes. All of those are the fulfillments of what Jesus prophesied in Matthew 24 that would occur during the last, uh, during that, the last days of that generation. And then you see the trumpets and the vows that are a continuing outpouring of the judgments of God in God keeping His end of the covenant bargain with the catastrophes that He promised them, if they would not repent, He was keeping His end of the covenant bargain of the law. And then you see a harlot city destroyed, and then you see a new bride come on the scene. That harlot system and that harlot bride was apostate Israel. The beast was Rome, uh, and, and God was going to destroy, destroy the city in fulfillment of what He said in Luke's Gospel, These be the days of vengeance, that all things might be fulfilled. And then He ends with a city that has foundations, and a river runs through it, and a river of the water of life is free. We are about to run out of time. Once again, this is our last broadcast, but tune in, check our website regularly. We appreciate your giving and your sacrifice and your letters and your cards. Please stay with us as we make this transition and consider becoming a partner with us today. You can call that number on the screen, and usually if you want to, if you say this or DVR, you can call that number. We can keep you updated whenever something is happening with our television channels. But please tune in. We want to keep you following us. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Hallelujah. For anyone struggling to understand John's writings in Revelation, this book provides true, biblically-based answers. Through detailed insights into the letters John wrote to the seven churches of his day, you will learn how to avoid the mistakes of the early church to overcome today's trials and tribulations. This book will provoke you to thought and dialogue, bringing greater clarity and revelation of Jesus Christ.